Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. As a special gift to every viewer on YouTube, there is a link in the description to apply for a free breakthrough trading strategy session with myself. What does that mean? Alex created a free trading course for beginners and at the end of it, we will be selecting a few non-members to get on the phone with myself, Tosh, T Bradley 90 to help with your trading. Click the link in the bio, watch the video and apply today. Now, while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. All right, guys. So technically this is week eight of the Q and a, um, the new member, you know, T Bradley nineties Q, uh, weekend new member orientation webinar every, every week at 2 PM Eastern standard time. I just want to say this for the recording. Um, now let's open this up to discussion. Does anybody in chat, and write it in the new member channel that's a member. And if you're not a member, join right now and then you can ask me. <laughs> Just go to the join now page on site. Um, let's talk about some things. So does anybody have some questions? We can talk about, um, we can talk about charts day, we can talk about anything like maybe topics of conversation, what traders are having problems with, maybe what they're excelling at, like who wants to talk about some stuff, which I can as well, I can just kick it off, but who's the, does anybody have some questions to start? I see somebody typing. By the way, thank you guys for making it to the end, man. We got a lot of um, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We've already talked about a lot of stuff. I'm so glad to be here with you guys, and and thanks for sticking around so long. We got a ton of people in here, man. I'm excited. I want people to learn as best they can, and I want you guys to know what MIC is all about, man. When you join MIC, you are not just a number. We're going to take you by the hand and make you feel special. And because you are, man, I don't want to see anybody fail. I'm just that personality type, and I hate when I see people lose, man. So I'm like, dude, if I can save one guy, man, I, I'm happy. So, you know, join MIC, man, and really feel free to reach out to us, man. My DMs are always open. My, here, I'll post my email so you guys have my email. Tosh at myinvestingclub.com um, for contact. Uh, what's up, George? Uh, do you have videos detailing your my your stuff strategy? Uh, the one that looked like triple tops. Yeah, so those are stuff moves, brother. We don't necessarily teach triple tops, like which is as cliche as it gets to like the like the Google for like you could Google like what's a triple top, right? We're gonna teach you stuff moves. So like here's a, here's an example of like a stuff move today. Where is it? Um, let me pull up a bigger chart. Um, yeah, so we teach all stuff like this. We've got tons of videos on this in the library. Guys, check this out. So this is one of my favorite strategies, and I took advantage of this today, right? So here, let me, I know a lot of people function on the, um, on the one minute. I'll just do the three minutes. So I use three minute charts, and uh, I know a lot of guys use the one minute, but just bear with me and use my time. I use the three. So look at this, George. This is what I'm looking at every single day. This is a massive stuff move. So when the stock is opening up, you know, MICR today was a pump. You know, other rooms got a hold of it and it was kind of manipulated. And MICR is, you know, it's already got some meat on the bone. So this thing, you know, quote unquote meat on the bone, guys, is when a stock is up, but it has exactly what it sounds like, literally the proverbial meat on the bone or in a sense range or room to come down. So when this stock was up, you know, I look at the percentage and I go, okay, this is up from 240 to uh, what, what was it, 320 pre-market. That's, that's enough room for a stock to have some range to come down if there's no real catalyst and the daily chart looks like shit. So look at this daily chart. Does that look like something you want to long? I'll show you a stock that looks like a good long. Look at this, that's what you want to see when you're longing stocks. But if you see this, you think you want to long this stock, you think this company does good, Last week it's here, the other week it's here, the other week it's here. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, dude, five months ago, this thing was trading at eight bucks. Now it's trading at $2. Every freaking day it runs, it can't hold its gains. That's what these quote unquote needle candles are in these wicks. When it wicks right back down like that, as you guys can see, I, I, I have VWAP on, so bear with me. But when you guys see these wicks that send right back down, this is a company that can't hold its gains. This is terrible. I don't look at this and I go, oh wow, this is a great company. So that's, that's number one. Then you go, what's the float? You know, how much is it up? Then I go to the intraday and I'm like, okay, this stock is up. It's really up on no news. What was the news? I, this is TOS charting. You know, I, I can't even remember what the news was, but what compliance plan acceptance letter, are you kidding me? Or no, that wasn't it. Um, oh, 3.7 million contract award. 
that is nothing to me. That's not a phase two, three. That's not good end result. That's not a major acquisition. They've got just a little contract award out there with 3.7 million. What's that going to do for a big company? Here's what happens, man. It's already up. It's got enough room to come down. This thing, I, now here's one of the number one things we teach. Lines. It, we like whole and half dollar numbers, guys. Take a look. 350. This is a key level. If it runs into this, it could be a good short. Now that's front side shorting. So if you wanted to short in a daily resistance levels and or whole and half dollar numbers, you can do that. Just have set risk. I love backside. Like I've mentioned this whole webinar. I like stuff moves. You don't need a triple top just to see a great stuff. Look at this candle. Are you kidding me? Anybody that chased from brick it, dude, look at this. Anybody that chased in here is dead in three minutes when this candle closes. So what did I do? I hit this. I hit this. I'm hitting the next candle under VWAP. Not only is it bearish under VWAP, I'm hitting the pop back up to VWAP because this is the biggest stuff move and it just bagged a bunch of longs. Now we unwind them. And I cover it all the way down, which as you saw my, uh, I do love backside. Don knows me very well. <laughs> Personal life and trading, as we probably can all guess. Uh, so George, we have a ton of strategies on this, buddy, but I don't want you to think so linear that maybe it's just, oh, is this a double top? Is this a triple top? Bro, we have stuff moves, examples every single day. That will say them live. Alex is really good at saying them live. Like he'll be like, hey, that was a stuff in a VWAP. You know, this was a, this was a high a day stuff. This was a pre-market stuff, like whatever it is. And you're going to watch our videos and see how often these things occur. I mean, this is an A plus setup for me. It's up on no news. It's got enough meat. I, the daily chart sucks. It's a pumper chat. So when the, when the longs that chase this, following a Furu's alerts, sell into it, what do you think that's going to do? Everybody's going to go, oh shit, when this candle happens and continue selling off. So that's the whole point, guys. That's the whole point. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, great question, George. What was my stop for the trade? Great freaking question. So Unfortunately, I did not get much on this at all. So this is, I'll show you guys exactly how I did this. So I set an order right, uh, actually, where the hell is my chart? I can pull it up, hold on one second. I posted it somewhere. There I am, so check this out guys. So where did I short? My first, I chased it a little bit because I was so into this, but here's what I was willing to do. So this is what's called scaling, and I'm gonna show you guys this. So I chased it. I said, dude, that is the biggest stuff move ever. I said, this thing is most likely smoked. I am going to hit this shit. Um, oh, that's a one minute chart, so this is a three. So I'm assuming it was like probably right there. It's hard to judge on a one versus three, but I think it was right there. Then what did I do? I did this. I set orders right here, and that was my risk, George. So I'm glad you asked that, buddy. I set a hard stop on a high day break. So check this out. I, you know, I set a certain line. Like it usually looks like like this. Or I use do green or something. This is where my hard stop is out. So I had scale orders. So this was the only filled one before I hit it down here as well because it continued breaking down. So I'll change the color, right? If this was a filled order then it's going to look like this, right? This was a filled order. Now these were my um, fishing orders that I wanted it to jump up to that it didn't, right? Like I had orders here and I was like, shit, I didn't get enough on. But if they did, I set a hard stop out immediately right here. So this would have been my hard stop out. It would have looked like something like this, right? Bear with me. So just because these have not filled yet, I am already placing a hard stop right here. So you've got to understand what I'm talking about. This is the beauty of having a job that a lot of you guys do. And you can go to your job. Dude. You can go walk away from your screen. So just because these haven't filled yet does not mean that I can't set a hard stop already. So say this was 2,000 shares, right? Actually, I think that's what it was. And then I threw another two or something like that. This was like 2,000 shares. So then here's what I did. This is an order for probably 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, right? Like I'm trying, like I like the 5,000 share count usually sometimes on something like this. If it was, uh, if it was more range or uh, less range, maybe more, right? But this had medium sized range. So I was like, I can get a really nice move out of this. Uh, just nice quick little scalp, in, which turned out to be a total breakdown, but I set fantasy covers. So here's what I did. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Now, what is this market stop out? Obviously, if this is two and these are ones, that's a 5,000 stop out. Do you understand that? I am already setting this because if it goes up here, obviously these are going to fill. 
So I'm going to need a 5,000 here. So it just sits there unless it gets filled, never got filled, and then boom, here's what happened. I got my fantasy covers, boom. I set them, I walked away. Whatever hit first, I said fantasies and I said that. So that's kind of like prop firm trading. That's my style of trading. Um, and I hope that was clear because I'm new to teaching that. But uh, I hope that was clear. That was, that was a lot. That was a lot. Um, what was your stop? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Arvon, what's, Arvin, what's up, dude? <laughs> dude, I met, you, uh, I met this guy in Philly recently. Really cool guy, man. Really cool dude. Uh, can you walk us through where you would draw lines for MICR pre-market? Would love to know how you would plan your trade ahead of time. So, okay. So, yeah, I love that you answered. I asked this question. I, because I'm only pure backside, it would have been very different had it been something like this. Let me show you. So, so DPW, right? This is a stock that has, these were my lines already drawn. This was literally my watches. Interested in a short around 525 in a previous topping action because I want outer lines. I'm not trying to chase it down here. There's better plays. I like the best odd case scenario, right? So this was my lines. I wanted to short the previous tops and I would draw a line right here for DPW specifically. I would go to the major uh, failed candles and I don't like to use the wicks personally. I like to use the base of the candles. So where are the topping action, right? Right here. So this is what's called line to line, guys, which Bao teaches and we teach here at MIC. If I'm shorting into this line, this is kind of an inner line. Like it's not necessarily a super outer line. These are the outer lines. This is where I want it to scale. But here's the thing. This is line to line. So say I hit here and I scale a little bit because this is a very far journey, right? From 475 to what? 520. Say I'm throwing a little bit of size right here at the inner line. If it breaks, I'm not trying to scale all the way up here. I'm cutting it and reattacking at the outer line. This, because these lines are much closer, maybe I'll scale the whole thing small size. I wish they were a little bit closer, but again, like play up to what you're comfortable with risking. So again, that's going from line to line. If this line didn't work, you cut immediately. And now, because say these were really close together, like say this, say I had three. Boom, dude, I'm scaling all these. Me, Bow, and Alex, we're gonna scale all these. Why? Because this is one resistance point. This is three resistance points, bro. Think about an apartment building as Bow usually talks about. This is one ceiling. Dude, this is three floors close together where you've got to break through one wall, the next wall, and then the next because these are all psychological price targets. Then check this out. Then you may have a whole and half dollar number right there. So you see what I'm saying? Like you want to use line to line. It's very important. Make sure that you know where and how to scale because dude, I'm not scaling from here to here. I'm dead. Because what if it goes to here? You want to use our lines. And I know I'm drawing a ton of shit, guys, but as you guys can see, um, let me just erase all this. This is what we teach at MIC, man. This is the best odds for success. So let me show you. This is a, this is, let's call it a 16 blackjack hand. Waiting for this is a 20. That's a king, baby. That's double kings. That's when I bet bigger. So I may be taking a trade here but it's probably a couple thousand shares while I may want to get full size here because that is already pre-market over it. Do you see how many longs are underwater from chasing right here? So if this stock makes a journey all the way up here, bro, these guys are going to want to break even, man. And here's the thing. Trading is not an exact science, just like nothing is in life. But I mean, you know, like even, even a plane is like the safest form of transportation, right? Yet, people still crash in planes. So what do you do? If I'm scaling here, I am setting a hard stop for every single trade. So if this is my stop, or maybe high a day, you know, depending on the range and volatility, this had a decent amount of range, I would not have scaled from 520 to 566. That's too far. I would have scaled this level, said, you know, if it makes it up to this level, I'm probably definitely going to cut it. So here's what I would have done. That's my hard stop, man. Dude, that's how you trade. That's line to line. Again, you know, if I'm playing inner lines, which are a little bit less probability setups, I'm hitting smaller. If I'm waiting for these outside lines, I'm hitting bigger because it's just, it's a better setup. And specifically when you have this kind of overhead. So something, oh, so to answer your original question, uh, Arabin, um, on MICR, how would I approach something like this? Okay, let's go live. Let's go live. See this, buddy? Now, this is all front side. So if I'm looking at this pre-market, there I'm not I'm not placing lines down here like because there's not enough meat. I actually don't want to short like it like too 
87 unless it's like a death slam candle, but it needs to create some overhead first, right? So like, does that make sense? I'm trying to let this make sense in the sense that I want this to go up for, if this just died out of the gate, it probably wouldn't have enough meat for me to get into and not enough people back. But because this had a big move, then yes, then I'm hitting down here. But if this would have just died out, I don't know if this is going to trap back because it might not have enough people stuck. So when I'm creating lines, if I'm looking for just backside, you do not need to trade everything out the gate, bro. I'm going to give this an hour. I'm going to give this 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. I'm going to wait for my confirmations and boom, there it was. So I didn't draw one line on MICR. And by the way, um, I didn't even see this pre-market. I actually like saw it one minute before opening. Um, actually, no, I take that back. I, uh, I, yeah, yeah, something like that. I can't really remember exactly how it happened, but it was like, it was like, it was kind of a last minute thing. You know? It was kind of last minute. And then I was like, oh shit, like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have the ball over there. I gotta, I gotta get this. <laughs> but I didn't put much thought and process in the planning of this pre-market because again, um, I think I'm confusing another stock, maybe BPW. Because this was, again, this was front side pre-market. So I like pure backside and or a, con a confirmation that's so strong that might be going into backside. Does that make sense? Maui guy, what's up buddy? Tosh, can you explain your strategy for securing locate? Say there's three low hangers, one hot chick with possible backside that day. How many different stocks will you locate? What time of day do you reserve the shares? Oh bro, I'm, I'm waking up at 4.40 every single morning as soon as my brokerage opens. I'm looking at everything pre-market and I am getting shares for anything now we got that one has backside already in it. So right here, right? If my brokerage has DPW, backside is in pre-market. In my opinion, there is enough overhead that it, while this may not be true, true backside, it's enough backside or overhead to tell me that if backside occurs, I'm, I'm securing low for this hands down. Now, MICR, I'm going to get a little bit, you know what I mean? Like I see this and while it's front side, I'm not going to get as much, but I'm going to get a little bit because this may never give me an opportunity. So does that kind of make sense? Like I want to reserve more for the things that are more guarantees, but anything that fits my criteria, you know, if it's over a certain float, if the FinViz criteria is good, if the daily chart is good, like I'm looking at the daily chart, right? Like if four stocks are up with enough meat and the daily chart looks like this, I'm reserving for all four. If I can get the borrow and it's not, you know, 10 cents a share and, and absolute, you know, <laughs> absolutely expensive. And I think it's worth my while, but anything that I think will be backside now is currently in backside or extended right now and may have a depth candle or a slam candle later for a late day crack. I'm reserving, bro. I'm reserving. Uh, and that's how I do that personally. You know, every trader is different. Uh, but that's what I do. Oh, and then low hangers. So like, sorry, um, let me also talk about, um, cause you asked that. So what was a good low hang? I, this was not a necessarily great one, but I'll use the example, uh, because it's one that I can think of. And then I think there was another one that I, uh, wanted, um, what was it? Not FFHL. Um, someone help me out. What ran today? Netty? No. Was it OSN? There was a low hanger. God, I'm trying to think. Well, whatever. I'm just going to show you this example. Oh, oh, sorry. It was um, DGLY. So something like this, right? DGLY. If something is broken down day one, dude, I'm reserving this. I'm reserving this because it closed in this mid range where there's enough meat to come down, especially if there's a relief pop into these guys right here, which are all bagged from day one. So if the stock opens up, you know, right here, well, let's actually see where it opened up. So uh, it, yeah. So see that see how it didn't gap up and it didn't really gap down. This is the level that longs are still stuck in pre-market from yesterday. All these guys are probably going to want a relief pop out or, um, you know, to get out break even at certain levels. So I'm now looking for a, uh, red to green fail if it gaps down, or I'm looking for, if it runs up like this, I'm looking for a previous high of day scale. And look guys, with shorting men, once you really get a foundation, as Bao always says, you know where you want to short. It's do you have the patience to wait for the A plus setup? This was huge, man. You could have scaled into previous high of day with waited for this run up with this is your stop. You know, if it, if it breaks previous high of day, because you do not want to be short a day to play that breaks previous high of day. You just don't. It's a terrible strategy. And it's terrible risk reward. So, you know, while red to green may be down here because it closed down here. Um, dude, I mean, this is the A plus, you know, if you just waited for these, you, 
you would be trading less but making more money. So even if you build a nice starter, right? Like there's just there's just a, this is, that's a big move, man. Like you can you can grab a nice size move, and it's predictable. I think the only reason why this brand so much is it's a lower float, but also I think a pumper got a hold of this and pumped the shit out of it. So that's that. But um, on something like um, NVTR, right? I uh, planned it. I this was my plan in chat. I posted this in chat. This was my kind of pre-market uh, watch list, which I just I just didn't end up trading it because I got sidetracked. And, and I don't like 80% institutional ownership as much. So again, it kind of just see how it kind of just teeters around. But I wanted, you know, it opens up down here. It's got a little bit of a weird gap. You know, it kind of gaps down a little bit. A uh, previous high of day reject or a go green. So if this is the red to green, right? If this is opening up and this is the red to green, I usually, if it's gapped down and not, you know, this kind of criteria, I am looking to hit it short right here or at least a starter. And then again, line to line. So I would short right here and then I would go into these topping actions right here with, you know, risk like probably up here. But I wanted to personally wait for it because I didn't like the criteria on this one. I wanted it to go about up here and then slam candle back red. And then I would have shorted it like, um, I would have chased the red a little bit. Um, I would have hit it when, like kind of like the first red day, you know, a little bit like that strategy, even though this isn't really like that, but I would have wanted a slam back to red because I ideally wanted up here. I wanted as close to the previous high of day as possible. I wanted a 2020 setup, but if it would have reclaimed green a little bit, then slammed, I would have taken that. I didn't want to take this particular setup with a little gap down and hit the red green. So I didn't trade it. Um, yeah. Yep, that's one of Alex's favorite setups. Yep, that's what we teach, man, every day at MIC. The low hangers to look at, the levels to look at, um, you know, what was stuck the day before, who wants out day two. Um, man, we have so much. Bro, you become a monthly, you have everything you've ever needed. You become an annual in lifetime, you have everything you've ever needed, and then some. <laughs> Oh man, hopefully that helps. Uh, do you follow any furus to see what they're pumping? I used to, I used to, and then guess what? In all honesty, Sparky, I got, I got addicted to it and I got reliant on it and I realized I was not trading, I was just betting against them, really. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't, like, look, trading is, yeah, you sometimes wanna have those things on your radar. I don't personally anymore, unless someone alerts it in chat that another room is in, but I used to just wait for those alerts and then you know bet against the opposite of them. But I realized, man, that, that that's just, what if the pumps run out you know, one day? I wanna know how to fucking trade without you know just betting against pumps. So I purposefully did not sign back up to them or um, use my buddies or you know use his information, and I just, I just did it for myself. That was years ago, man. I was just like, you know what, man, I'm too reliant on just pumps. Let me really understand a process. Let me get into trading so that now I'm so based on my technical patterns. I'm so based on my lines, my process every day and my confirmations that whether, you know, here's a great example, whether MIC, MICR was a pump or not, I'm getting in. That's my confirmation. I'm getting in. I don't care if it's a pump or not. And because I only hit true backside now, I really don't need the pumps. I don't need to know if they are pumps or not. It's good to know because maybe I can hold covers for a further unwind. And I think that's why I held covers all the way down here was because I knew it would unwind chat chasers. But my point is, is learn how to trade. Don't learn how to just follow the crowd or bet against the crowd. You, you see what I'm saying? You've got to really learn these things. So I, uh, I detached myself from pumps for years. And nowadays, I, I honestly really don't care. I mean, I pay attention from the, from the, from the bleachers, but I, it's not my main focus. Yes, but I'll tell you what, Bao likes to do a lot of, um, of uh, daily resistance trades. And some of that is front side trading, but he's great at, um, what's it called? Like your LCI today, right? Like Bao's chart, man, he was hitting this on the way up, but he is so good about hitting daily resistance levels and covering quickly. So, you know, here's a general rule of thumb. If a stock is front side, guys, which this is, I mean, you can just look at the trend and say, this is not backside. If Bao is shorting these channels or these levels of, you know, um, these pre-market levels or uh, daily resistance levels, he is doing what's called front side covers, guys. He knows, Bao knows, check this out. He is skilled enough to know that if he's scaling this pop, if he's scaling this, 
he is planning on covering right here, guys. He is not trying to cover down here and hold all day because he knows what the trend is and he knows it's going up and up and up and that this could theoretically rip his face off if he's overly patient. So this is also what we teach, man. You can be a frontside shorter, but you better be more cautious. Use your outer lines and make sure that you are doing frontside covers and protecting yourself. There's nothing wrong with holding lower, but pushing yourself first, and you better fucking have a hard stop in, man. I'm telling you right now, do not be a frontside trader with no plan to you know, cover into washes and without a hard stop, or you're just going to short here every day and get squeezed. That's just how it is. But does it mean that you can't make a ton of money on the way up? That's what Bao does. That's his specialty, man. And then when it establishes a channel, you know, Bao is taking advantage all day, man. He's scalping all day, bro. He's trying to check the channel, man. He is playing channels until they break and they don't work anymore because there are so many moves in here that can be bought, that can be shorted, you know, shorted into resistance and bought at support, whatever, you know. The whole point is there are a billion ways to make money. That's just not my personal way of making money or Alex's. Alex is a little bit more my play style, but dude, again, like what resonates with you? When you join MIC, man, we've got traders trading every kind of setup possible. So link up with those guys that can help you maximize your personal comfort zone, your personal strategy. You see what I'm saying? So things like that. Not for pumps to learn the trade. Yeah. Yeah, man, seriously. Love it. That's why you, Sparky, that's why I joined MIC in the first place. Uh, not for pumps, but to learn to trade on my own. Yeah, buddy. I love that, man. Again, we're not a pump and dump room, man. We may alert some of our entries. We may um, show you some of our charts. But again, guys, we're going to give you the thought process behind stuff. We're not just, nobody's here to, you know, show pony and nobody's here to be like, hey, look at me and brag and I top tick this and I'm cool. You know what's cool? Making money. Top ticking is cool. Sure. But I'm going to tell you right now, having a set process, having a certain system every single day that you rinse and repeat, now that's fucking cool, man. Where you go and tell people, helping and helping others, man, that's as cool as it freaking gets, man. When you understand something so unbelievably precise and accurate that you can pass the elevator back down and help others, dude, that's, dude, we're all about karma here at, at MIC, man. And, and now Alex and myself, again, you know, when we created MIC, man, what was the goal? to create the best community possible, to hide nothing, to give you guys everything we've ever learned, to give you guys every strategy that works. You know, that was using pivot points for how many years and could it theoretically have kind of hindered his, um, you know, p ls just because other people might be hitting those levels and, and he's not the only one that knows about it? Sure, but here's what, but, but it works and he wanted to share that message. That's the whole point. It's like we wanted to give you guys the secret to trading which there really is no secret. The secret is really just create a process and rinse, repeat every single day. Nobody's got the holy grail. Well, you're not going to join up MIC and make a million dollars tomorrow because we've got one strategy that's tailored to you. We're going to show you what the psychology is behind the strategies that work. And when they don't work, you protect yourself. It's all about entry and risk management. So, you know, again, man, real traders helping real traders. Uh, do you guys use hotkeys? We, um, a couple of traders here do. I do not. Dow does not. Um, Alex does not. I don't think the three of us even know how to put a hotkey on because here's the thing, Sparky. When you learn how to actually trade um, and really get your process down, you don't need them. You know, look at this, man. Look at this. DPW. Dude, you're, my, my orders are set, man. I don't need the hotkey shit. My orders are set at the resistance levels. If I'm looking to scale here, I'm waiting for these to just get filled. Why would I need a hotkey, you know? So hotkeys is what the gurus all teach you and like, oh man, I got to scalp three cents in a second. Boom, got it. All right, now I'm going to leave you guys with the bag. That's ridiculous, man. That's not trading. That's fucking, go to, go play, you know, those like arcades with ski ball and stuff. It's like, you got to be so precise on all those machines. That's hotkeys, man. Now, I, tr I plan all my trades. Hotkeys are for gurus who want to pump socks to you. Yeah, because the thing about a hotkey is speed, right? So like, to, to have a hotkey in your trading, you, you think that speed is going to be the thing that makes you money. No, dude. Speed is going to help you. But I'll tell you what. I know some slow freaking traders, and they make a ton of money. Why? Because they know where to hit a stock and how to protect themselves if it goes wrong. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> trading is not easy, but it's simple. If you plan your trades, you wouldn't need a hotkey. Not at all. Like, I, dude, I don't even know how to place a hockey. I swear to God. I purposefully 
never let myself learn that shit because then here's the funny part. Bro, you learn hot keys and now you're just boom, 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 boom. Like you're just you're just typing so quickly because now it's so convenient. You freaking breathe on your keyboard and you're in thousand chairs, five thousand chairs, ten thousand chairs. And you're fucking you're dead, dude. You're dead. Like um, for the hard stop, do we have to wait for your orders? No, you do not. And that's the best part, um, Stephen or Steven. That's the best part, bro. Say these, check these. Watch this, buddy. I'll go by color so you can kind of um, understand by color. Um, say that that is a, say the green is a hard stop and say that these are unfilled orders because they would look like that on DOS anyways. They would feel unfilled. You know, the color would not be, you know, shaded in for like, watch, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Like these are filled in. Those are filled in. So when your order fills, these are filled in colors, correct? So when an open order is out there, um, one sec. When an open order is out there, they're not filled in. So check this out. If I wanted to scale this level and this is my hard stop, I can already set my hard stop with my orders that haven't filled yet and go to work. And here's the thing. If they all fill and rip against me, my hard stop's there to protect, man. So again, like, dude, if you think that, you know, you join MIC and you've got a job and you can only trade the first hour of the open and you're like, oh man, I don't want to join MIC. I don't want to pay for a community because I can only trade the first hour of the day. Bro, that's all I do. And I said a hard stop. I could theoretically go work another job. I don't, but I could. <laughs> like, I could just make money in the morning, set my hard stops, even if they haven't filled yet, and go to work. And then come back later and be like, oh, my fantasy covers hit or this and that. And then monitor it for mobile. Like, <laughs> Dude, when you learn how to properly trade, man, there's no restrictions. So just because you guys have a job or a career doesn't mean it, there, that is not a restriction, man. That is a speed bump, a minor one at that, not those ones at the mall where you can't go even two miles and over without your car feeling like a freaking 2012 happened and the sky opens up and the floor cracks. I'm talking like speed bumps where you can go 40 over, you know, and, and you don't even feel it, those ones. So terrible analogy, but whatever. <laughs> Hotkeys are chasing. Yes. Uh, for the hard yet got that. I tried on my TZ. It won't let me set a hard stop until my order is filled. Oh, that um, I have, I look, Stephen, I don't know anything about um, TZ. Um, nothing bad to say, nothing good to say. I don't know anything about them, but I will tell you um, that if that's the case, I guess that's just how their platform operates uh, because DOS, you can, you can set them even if they haven't filled. And that's what I do every single day. Bro, I, I'm, I, I set my orders and go make a coffee. I swear to God, so I don't get emotional <laughs> because if I'm nursing my position, I'm going to get emotional. I'm an emotional guy. Can't you hear me talk? Dude, I'm freaking all over the place. Like me and Bauer are emotional guys. But here's the thing, man. You can do things that can tailor to eliminating those emotions as a trader. And I have to be, man, because, dude, I'm an emotional guy, man. In my first two years, I'm watching every tick. I'm stressing out. I'm watching the tape. I barely even watch tape anymore, man. We are so confident in our lines that I'm not going to say you don't need tape, but fuck man, I, myself, and I know a lot of traders that make, you know, they make money without tape. So just saying, how do you deal with halts while orders are in? Do you cancel your orders in anticipation of resume to check where it resumes? Sometimes it depends on the situation. Turbulent. I mean, I wish I could show you a live example, but yes, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's just both, man. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It, it depends on the halt, man. It depends on who in it. You know, maybe a chat room got a hold and I found out and I'm not worried about the halt or it's pretty natural and organic and there's a ton of volume and demand. It's the hot chick of the day. Uh, it really just depends, man. Uh, can you set mutually exclusive orders on DOS like a range order to stock you out or cover for profit? This is a question for our moderator, Joe Kelly. So let me tag him. Maybe he can come to the rescue. I don't know anything about a range order because I have never used one. I use hard stops and regular limits and market orders if the spread is tight and I just need in and whack the bid. But my point is, um, you know, we got videos on this, brother, George. I, um, I don't use range orders, man. So I, I, I assume yes, because DOS is freaking amazing, but I, I just don't use them, brother. I, I, I personally don't. But they're great. Range orders and OCO orders are fantastic. So we'll see if uh, Joe Kelly can answer that one.
Yes, OC orders. Thank you. Thank you, Val. We totally have videos on this. I know that. Um, yeah, guys, I mean, dude, we, we dropped a lot of information on you guys today. I, I, uh, I showed you outer lines. I showed you basically how to use hard stops, kind of my style of almost prop firm trading. Uh, I showed you guys backside and frontside kind of trend, you know, what a confirmation is on a stuff move. I mean, we talked about a lot of cool stuff today, man. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, this is, this is the tip of the iceberg. Like, you guys can't even imagine how much more content we have, how, much, how many videos we have on this stuff. Like, dude, if you learn something new today, imagine if you joined MIC. For, like, think about that for a second. If you, if you thought this webinar was good or maybe this kind of opened your eyes in any light, imagine the shit that we offer every single day to members. Um, we have live, live commentary of all of this. Dude, if this stock is going up, Bao is telling you exactly where he wants to hit and why he's hitting it, or if he thinks it's an avoid. I'm warning people all day in chat if I think it's an avoid, um, you know, because maybe it's a super low flow, it's the hot chick of the day, whatever it is, man. But again, this is just a tease today, guys, or a preview, or, you know, I do this every week, but this is to just show you guys what we're offering and to, and to really show you guys that a community exists where everybody is taking care of each other. Um, it's a very positive environment. Um, you know, we've got endless content and you can, you can never feel scared to reach out. Like don't feel scared to reach out. And we really just have a ton of stuff for you guys to learn. And we just want to show you, um, back to my slide. So let me pull it up real quick. I want to, I got a couple more slides. So, you know, just to kind of bottleneck this a little bit, guys, just kind of cap this. Um, we have a new thing. So, uh, we have a 30 minute beginners course and you can apply now for a free trading session. All you got to do is go to the link and uh, see. So if you are not a member yet, guys, check this out. Um, we covered a lot of it today, but I'm going to tell you right now, check this link out. Um, it is fantastic. Um, um, you know, put the HTTPS, obviously, slash, slash. Um, it's going to be really good, man. I, you'll like it. You'll like it. Sign up. And then next is how to contact us. So um, again, you know, my investing club is a community, guys. It's a family. It's a brotherhood, everything in between. You are not just another member at MIC, not just a number. We are going to get to know you, hopefully meet you one day. Like we just, you know, hopefully meet you one day. Like we just met a ton of traders in Philly and I do, I'm, we've been open a year, right? Like we've been launched for a year. I'm starting to see members, man. I'm shaking their hands the fifth time because they've come to all of our boot camps. They've come to all of our meetups. You know, I'll probably throw an LA meetup soon and just mingle with some traders. You know, we, we just threw a Chicago meetup. Alex is going to do a New York meetup or a New Jersey one soon. That does San Jose, man. Like, dude, we're trying to change the industry for the better. And we're trying to get you guys on board uh, to learn, man, because we know how scammy it is out there and how many times we were juked and, and, you know, taught by people who just didn't know what they were talking about. And, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, if you are at a community right now that you are two months in, a very small time frame, you're two months in and you are still floundering and you're treading water and you don't really know, maybe it's very vague, you are at the wrong place. We have people in MIC a week in understanding our strategies, following along with chat, knowing exactly what to look for. Again, I'm not going to say you're going to join MIC and make a million dollars tomorrow. That's unrealistic. That's so stupid. I'm not a, I'm not a scammy salesman. What I'm telling you is you're going to have the best fighting chance, man. You're going to have a really good chance. You're going to be surrounded by some of the most hungry, talented, best traders who are all helping you. And here's the thing. MIC, we, because we're all looking at the same thing, it's a scanner in itself, man. Not only do you have a watch list every single morning right here where Alex talks all about this, Dude, we're practically a scanner at this point. If you scroll up and see all the stuff that we're talking about, if something comes on radar, um, you know, MDGH is a pump, this, that, you don't even need a scanner. So if you're paying $100, $200 a month on a scanner, bro, you don't even need it. Just go to MIC. I swear, I'm not, like, this isn't rocket science, man. It's not rocket science. So, you know, this is how to contact us, guys. Um, our Twitter is My Investing Club. Instagram, my investing club, Alex Demez, AT09 underscore trader, modern rock, um, modern underscore rock, modern underscore rock for both. Um, Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's my email. If you have any questions about MIC joining, upgrading the lifetime, you know, from annual, um, talk to me. Talk to me. Um, here's my here's my um, Instagram, tbradley90 underscore trader. See me drive around and talk about stocks every now and then. Um, DM us, guys. Reach out. Do not be shy. Do not be shy to reach out to us. We are a community. 
uh, to help each other. <laughs> Val, you still trading LCI, bro? <laughs> I love it. Val's still trading. It was, oh, man, I love it. That's freaking hysterical. So, guys, thank you so much for coming along, man. I love doing these. I do these every single week. I record the Q&As. Uh, the Q&A will be posted. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. Imagine how much you get out of it if you are a part of MIC. And, again, you know, we've got content every single day of the week, man, so you're never not up to date. So if you are a member, uh, go see Austin's webinar tomorrow. It's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's like two hours. It's so intensive. It's so exclusive to our strategies, what he's trading. Um, and if you're not a member, sign up today and you can watch it tomorrow. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to click out of here right now. Um, enjoy the rest of your beautiful Wednesdays. I hope you guys killed it today. If you didn't, um, come on down. See you guys. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs and chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.